Judges chapter 7, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Judges chapter 7, beginning in the first verse, the Bible says, Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, of Herod, on the hope so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Mori in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give to the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore go to... Therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart from Mount Gilead. And three, and, and there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the people, and the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee, for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go, shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, were three hundred. But the rest of the people bowed down their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the three hundred men that lap will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hands, and let all the other people go every man into his place. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for the many uh, truths that you hide in your word every day. Lord, we thank you for revealing them to us. We thank you. Uh, for the reassurance of your word on a daily basis. We pray now that you would bless your word to the hearts of the hearers, and we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, I'll be uh, preaching this morning on the strange things that God asked his people to do. Now, uh, God always chooses a people to his service. That has always been his way, that will always be his way until the coming of Christ. And it is really no different here. Now I also want you to remember that in these few years of the judges, that that's how God wanted uh, his nation Israel to be run. Now, every nation under the sun today seemingly wants a single leader, like the, uh, the uh, uh, European nation, uh, uh, now they have a king, and uh, he, you know, a lot of people say, well, he don't have uh, any ruling power. Well, they, they have more than you think, because every day the prime minister goes to the king or queen for advice. So they have a lot more power than many people believe, and that's very appealing to the flesh. Uh, you know, George Washington, one of our founding fathers, they wanted immediately to make him president. No, they wanted him to be their king. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is the bend of the flesh. And the reason why is that we, we have a lot more confidence in this flesh than belongs to it. And, and, you know, even in our government, we have what's called a three-branch government. Uh, we have the Supreme Court, or uh, the, the judges, really, and, and we have the House of Representatives, the Senate and the House of Representatives, and then we have our president. And supposedly, 
they share the rule. Now, in the modern day, I'd be willing to submit to you that the court proves the land and not everybody else. But at any rate, I want you to see the desire of the people is kings. Now, from the very beginning of God's people, this judicial type of government is what he said, I want you to be ruled by the judges. They were to take the law, interpret the law, and that was to be how the uh, government was to be, to be get, to give out their authority. But remember what they said? Up, oh, make us a king. They always wanted to go against God's plan. And, you know, don't get down on Israel. That's every one of us, except for the help of Christ. It's man's nature to go against God. So in this few years when the judges ruled is where these events happened. Uh, in the first verse, then Jerubbabel. Now, uh, very few people know Jerubbabel as a person, but everyone's heard of Gideon. Jerubbabel also was the name of a wicked king, and I don't know if that's why they fall away from using Jerubbabel or not. Gideon is really more of a, a secular name. It, it is more, uh, it, it is not a Jewish name at all, and so I'm not sure why, they, why this was, but it was what it was. And, and then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of, of Harod so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of, of Morah in the valley. Now, if you're familiar with the Bible and familiar with these circumstances, there was a great outnumbering of those people compared to Israel. When they arrived, they were already greatly outnumbered. You know, that's been the case of God's people from the beginning. You know, look, up, look about the assembly this morning. There are very few people here. Don't let that discourage you. The ministry of Christ resulted in how many true believers? Eleven. Remember he said, have I not chosen you? And one of you is a devil. Uh, Judas was not genuine. Judas was not the real deal. Uh, Judas, the Bible says he was a devil from the beginning. Uh, and, and so we see that that is a natural state of God's people. Being outnumbered should be an expectation of God's people. Knowing that we are always in the minority and there's nothing wrong with that. Verse 2, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites unto their hand, lest Israel shall vaunt themselves against me. Now, I want you to see the whole transpiring of this thing where he was going to reduce the number that fought for Israel to 300. The whole reason for it was for God to be the glory. He says, if you go up there with that many people, you're going to say our nation is strong. Our nation did this. Follow the history of our own nation. At the end of World War II, we, be, we began to be called the strongest nation on earth because of our atomic bomb and because annihilating two of the greatest powers that had ever existed. And you know what? People got proud on that, didn't it? I can't think of the, uh, the singer now, proud to be an American. Uh, now there's nothing, that, you know what? We are a great nation. We have liberties that other people dream about, but we do, need, we do not need to vaunt ourselves in that. You know who give us the freedoms we have? Christ. It, it wasn't the Supreme Court. It wasn't the House of Representatives. It wasn't, it wasn't our president. If anything, in the modern day, they're taking them from us. Right. But I want you to see that is a God-given liberty. And so we find then that these individuals uh, uh, had to be reduced so God would get the glory. Then... Uh, 
in verse 3, Now therefore go and proclaim in the ears of the people, Whosoever feareth and afraid, let them return and depart early from Mount Gilead, and there return to them twenty, uh, twenty and two thousand. Now, you, you, you get the image of that. They were up there, but they were afraid. They had answered the call to service, but they didn't believe in it. Have you ever wondered how many people are just going through the routine this morning? But if we stood for the truth, if we openly said, hey, gay marriage is not of the Almighty, I wonder what, what, what the result would be. Well, you're, you're very lying. At the very least, you'll be hated. And at the very worst, they'll probably come out against you. You see what I'm saying? But I believe fully we don't need a bunch of Brady cats in the service of God. You know, you know what? I fully believe that Almighty knew their hearts, don't you? Yeah. Because you come out and say, Dean, you say this. And you believe as Gideon was with that great army, he ever believed that 22,000 of them didn't even support the cause? I don't think he knew that. I, I think he stood in ignorance of that. And, 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 and you know what? They were a bunch of Freddy cats because as soon as they had the opportunity, they left. Is that the day that we live? I believe it is. Why are our church houses empty? Because people are afraid. People know, uh, are fearful uh, of being called hyper-conservative or whatever other thing is thrown out there today, and they don't want to stand with the Lord's people. So we see 22,000 left, and only 10,000 remain. That's two-thirds of the people that did not really believe in Christ. And so they left. Verse 4, and the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down under the water, and I will try them for I will try them there, I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, that, that this shall not go with thee, and this, the same shall not go. So he says, I'm going to take you down to the river, and the ones I say can go, they're going to go up, and they're going to fight the Midianites, and the ones that I'm going to say stay, they're going to stay. Now that's very odd. That you know, until you come come down to do it, that's a that's very uh, scary thought, is it not? Y'all all can't go. That that was the end result, and why not? Because <laughs> because God wants the glory. I know some Baptist people did but day. And, and I, I kind of went like this with him a few times that thinks all men are called to preach. And I said, well, you'll have to show me a little Bible for that. And you know what? They couldn't. And I believe this is a, a first-hand of example. God chooses servants whom he will. And... Uh, and, and so we find these individuals, uh, he says, this is what they're going to do. Now, the, the behavior that they're going to do is some of the oddest you'll find in the Bible. And they're going to laugh like a dog. Now, you know what that tells me? Uh, when God moves in your life, you're going to act very, very strange. Amen. You remember the Bible says in the New Testament that that's actually what they would say about us. Now, uh, all the behaviors that he lists here, I've done except laughing like a dog. Now, I, I grew up from here to that headstone, or less, less, to a creek. And uh, I could almost throw a rock from my porch and land it in the creek. So I was in that creek my whole life. And you know what? 
And of course, you didn't think about it then. Jumbo Coakley had a th uh, whole set of cows that ran through the creek so that they could get their water and he didn't have to water them. And I was about less than a mile down the creek and I would just sup up water like you wouldn't believe. And it never occurred to me that Junebug's cows were relieving themselves in the creek. And you know what? Back in that day, I don't think it would have mattered. Uh, you, you'd never even thought of it. And you know what I've done? And nine times out of 10, Especially if I was in the water, I just sucked the water in. Get me a good cold drink of Cross Creek water and go on with my play. Now, if it was real cold and I wasn't in the water, I would cut my water and drink it like this, but I never lacked it. And, 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 uh, and I don't care how crazy you are. Uh, have you ever lacked water? I don't know anybody that has. I didn't think that I could get any water in lapping water, do you? Now, uh, our dogs, uh, I mean, they lap and they do a good job of it and they uh, constantly giving them water, so obviously it gets on board. But you know what? If I saw someone lapping water, I thought, them people ain't just right. Wouldn't you? Uh, they're not hitting on my weight. <coughs> so who would make you do that? Who would make you go a completely against what naturally happens to lack water? God would. God would say, take the, the natural instinct of man and say, boy, today you're going to lap. You think those boys as they was running down there thought, I'm going to lap water today. I don't think they did. I think it was instantaneous. I think it was a move of God. I think he impacted their lives. And, and it was impossible to go against it. And so they lacked water. You know what? When you have an experience with Christ, it's impossible to go against it. And so Gideon finds his army only includes 300 men. Now remember, after, after the scaredy cats left, they was down to 10,000. And now they were down to, they were down to 300 million. Now, it, and, and I'm no mathematician, and you know, I barely got by in college to do it. And uh, there were 33,000 men, if I, if I read right, before he started sending the scared people home. And you know what 300 is to 33,000? 0.01%. Less than one thousandth of the number of people that he originally had. You know, it, it just like Brother Jarrett was teaching, that goes against what every, everything that men think, so doesn't it? Like, there's no way to do this. What? What, what, you know, and, and they, you know, they, what they're really doing is blaming God, but they're too good to blame God, right? So what they say, everything you and I would have said, what is Gideon thinking? Right? But you know what? God's got great glory. And when we do things that God leads us to do, even though they seem strangely outside the box, who's going to get the glory? Who's going to be lifted up? Who's going to be uh, glorified in that? And, and it, it is Christ. Look around in the day in which we live. When people speed by here, do you think they're going, well, man, New Testament's meeting again. Thank God for that. No, they're like a bunch of idiots <laughs> and, and keep going. You know what we are to them? <laughs> we're, we're laughing at the stream. We're acting like a bunch of dogs. We're foolish. We don't have enough sense to, to spend our money somewhere else to use that, or let's say this, spend our time somewhere else. They're a bunch of foolish laughing dogs. And they keep going. Our behavior to them is very much outside the norm. And you know what? They don't understand. Why? They don't understand the, cause of, the call to Christ. And they certainly don't understand the call to service. Right. 
And so, uh, are you going to look strange? You betcha. Uh, it's the things that Christ is going to have you to do at time uh, against the brain. You know it. You know what? Me and Donna, and I think it's the one that's in there, but it may have been one. I think it is. It may have been one that got broken, but we have a secretary in our house, a little desk. It's not really a secretary that helps Donna. It's a, it's a piece of furniture. And uh, it's called a secretary. And it's cut out of wood this way. In other words, it's not long ways. It's cut this way. So that it runs, it looks like really almost that you would think it's against the brain. That's us in the modern day. We're, we're not going to fit in church. We're not going to look like everybody else. We're not going to act like everybody else. We're going to be cut against the grain. Now, the reality is this. Are you okay with that? Now, by and large, many people today are not. One thing that I want to issue that I have with the public school system is it. It trains our children not to be against the grain. It, it, it wants them to be crammed into a certain area, to be crammed into a certain lifestyle. So we see, what about against the grain? You gonna laugh like a dog? Now, I'm gonna go downstairs and enjoy lunch in a few minutes, and you know what? Everybody knows what I'm going to have to drink. Diet Dr. Pepper. And you know what? I'm not going to laugh at it. I'm going to do it like this right here. That's what everybody else does, right? Right. So in your daily life, are you willing to go against the grain? Now, are you willing to lap up the water. And, and you know what? I fully believe this. Like those, those men that walked down there, uh, I believe it was ingrained in them. They didn't have any idea they were going to lap water, but they did lap water. And you know what? <laughs> the redeemed will act like the redeemed. You don't have to beg them to. Remember, remember what uh, Paul said concerning the new Gentile believers? They do the things which are written in the law even though they know not the law. And you know why? It's up here. It's like lapping water. <laughs> to, to the redeemed, it's just it's natural. And when those old boys went down there and they started laughing, you ever thought about the other <laughs> 9,770 that saw them laughing water like a dog. <laughs> I bet they were made fun of, don't you? Man, he's, he's laughing water. I ain't never seen anything like that in my life. I bet they'll tell Gideon, <laughs> right? And, and, and so we, we find then we have to be okay to move against the grain in 2023. Now, uh, Acts chapter 4, New Testament, Acts chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading in uh, verse 5, Acts chapter 4, uh, and verse 5, and it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and, and John and Alexander, and as many as that were of the kindred of high priests, were gathered together at Jerusalem. Now, I want you to see that this, this group of men that were set against God's people were highly, highly intelligent people. They had a set of skills for that day that were very extremely intelligent. Well educated. And you know what? Well educated people often have a set of skills, right? You want Jared starting your IV or do you want me to? Right? And so we see, we see then the conglomerate of people, individuals say, man, Caiaphas knows this stuff. 
Caiaphas is the one that's going to come out on top. Caiaphas knows the law forward and backward. Caiaphas has got this pulled out. And plus he had all these other individuals that were equally as smart, and they were going to conglomerate, conglomerate together against God's people. Verse 7, And when they had set them in the midst, again, trying to intimidate them, you ever, uh, you ever been set in a circle and now everybody else around you? That, that can be very intimidating. Now, when I went to public school, it wasn't a little let everybody wins thing. We, we had some losers back then, right? And uh, one game we played, and you know what? I know other, no other school that ever did this except for W.T. Thomas. And it may have been the smoke from over at the steam plant. I don't know. But they would set us, like say if you were in history, they would set an individual and all your classmates would be in a circle around you on the middle court of the, of the, uh, of the basketball, uh, the gymnasium. And you had to answer a history question correctly to get out. <laughs> and... Uh, you know what? You'd come up with something pretty quick. Now, that's kind of the situation these old boys were getting into. And it wasn't because they couldn't get out of the circle like us unless we answered uh, a question correctly. It was to intimidate them. It, it was to make them feel small. It, it was like lapping water. Very few people did it. And in the same way, we're in the we're you know we're in a situation today where since we're in the minority, what they do is like to isolate individuals and make them give up, make them quit, make them stop what they're doing. And that that was the full premise of this questioning method that they were doing. Verse seven. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, "By what power?" Or by what name have you, have you done this? Now, what that means in the modern English, who gave you this authority? Who said this is okay? Verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done in to the impotent man by the means it, that he is made whole, be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before you whole. Don't sound like Peter was intimidated, does it? It doesn't sound like they shut Peter up. It sounds kind of like he laughed like a dog. Right. One man, in the midst of all those individuals, stood up in the middle and said, let me tell you what Christ has done. That's, that's who we need to be. He said, you know, and, and he mentioned the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, that is a very, very real thing that Baptists like to do like this around that, according to my understanding, is our comforter until the coming of Christ. Right? So I, I'm interested in him, ain't you? I, I, I'm amazed at his power. It doesn't mean you have to flop on the floor like a, like a maniac. But, I know the gospel would have never been real to me if the Holy Ghost hadn't showed up. What's the Bible say to itself? It is a living word. Mm -hmm. What makes it living? What makes you living? Your spirit. Right? <laughs> and, and, and so we see then that, that in the modern day, in the church age, if you will, that we, just like Peter... <laughs> We're going to be in those situations where you're going to be lacking water. Where you and you and you will look like the idiot. <laughs> right? 
But we'll be the individuals that are on, on the outside perimeter of the nation that we live today. You know what? Uh, you two, and, and this is in my short life, I'm 55 or almost 55, 50 years ago, Christians were still respected. In fact, they were so respected that the groceries didn't even open on the Lord's Day. Look what we have today. That they open up before we do. Right? So you think you're most popular? You think you're most likely to succeed? Remember those superlatives in high school? I don't think they're going to vote uh, you to be either one of those, do you? So uh, we live then in a day where we're going to be against the grain, where we're going to be a little bit different, when we're going to be lacking water when other people are sucking it up. That's okay. Last place, the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 14. Luke 14. And we're going to begin reading in verse 8. Luke 14, verse 8, Christ speaking. When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not, the, sit not down in the highest room, lest more honorable men than thou be bidden of him. Now, Jewish weddings were very different than than American weddings. We have a little bit of order to American weddings. Usually the bride's family and guests sit on one side and the, uh, the groom's guests and family sit on the other side. Uh, whenever uh, me and Donna got married, my side looked like a Baptist church on Wednesday night and Donna's side looked like a Pentecostal church. They couldn't have got any more in there if they tried. Uh, but you know what? I was okay with that. So we find in the Word of God, a, a, as Christ is speaking, humble yourself. Now what I found, that could have embarrassed me, or I could have been glad for the ones that were there. My mother was there. Judy was still living. Judy was there. A lot of my friends came. That's okay, isn't it? And you know what? I will say this. It was humbling. And so you, you, you sit on the lower part. You know what? That, that is something today that I've seen more hated than anything else, and that's simply humbling yourself. Saying, hey, I'm, I'm not on the top rung. In the Jewish weddings, however, they, they had, a, it almost looked like a, a tower and at the very top, the couple stood to marry. And all the way down, the guests would, would, would sit. And at the bottom the, uh, was the largest room. And who was in the largest room? The everyday people. And then if you worked down at the temple, if you were a priest, if you were family, and then finally the couple was on top. And, and, and so, you know what? Uh, when you got there, they didn't say, now, are you a priest? You identified yourself. And you went and sat where you belonged. You know what? Sometimes we have a lot higher opinion of ourselves than we should, don't we? When we, when we belong on the bottom rung, it's the nature of the flesh to hate that. We need to sit where we sit, don't we? Now, I think bad this, they'd have been fine down there at the bottom, don't you? And, uh, but it was a very different culture in that day. And, and we find that Christ's advice to us is lack water, be on the, be on the bottom rung. Be okay with that. Be, be fine with that. Do, you know what some of the best members in churches are? People that come faithfully. Might never even give you an amen. But they're there. They're faithful. You can depend on them. And so we find that that, that is what Christ is saying. Verse 9. 
And he that bade thee, and, and he that bade thee, and him come shall say to thee, Give this man place, that thou being with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go sit down in the lowest room, and when he that bade thee cometh, he may sit, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then thou shall have then thou have worship in the presence of them that set at meat with thee. So Christ said, the best advice I can give you is take your spot. And you know what? Later on, if, 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 the, if the father of the bride comes and says, hey, I saw you down here. You, you belong on the next floor. Well enough, right? Are you willing to lap water? Or are you willing to be the, the stranger to you? Are you are you willing to be the one that uh, man? Those people are strange. The, the, they're very different people. What does the Bible say that New Testament believers would be called peculiar? Mm -hmm. Right. Now that wasn't a very good comment in my age. I had a great aunt, my papa's sister. She killed herself. A very, very sad day. Now, I've all told you about my grandmother. She was, man, she was cut and dried. There was no gray whatsoever. And you know what? And that was, that was her sister. Oh, that was her husband's sister. You know what Nanny said? Well, she's always been peculiar. <laughs> so, they're calling, that's kind of compliment. That, that's not something that, you know, they pat them back, oh, you're peculiar. It's an insult. Are you okay with that? That's lapping water, ain't it? I mean, that, that's licking up water like a dog. Has Christ made that impact in your life that you're okay with that? You know what? I, I believe lapping water is just as intrinsic as coming to the house of God, don't you? I believe that Christ will drive you there. And you know what? When you can't make it, you'll be disappointed. It, it, it puts something in you, a true salvation, and you're never, ever the same again. You're like the one. And you got to be okay with it, right?